If you're new to Copilot for Microsoft 365 or just thinking about investing in some licenses, there are a few common gotchas that can leave new users scratching their heads that you should probably know about. So in this video, I'm going to highlight my top five issues as of August 2024 that continue to confuse or annoy many Copilot users, despite this being overall an extremely full-featured, useful and quickly improving product. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more. So if you haven't used Copilot for Microsoft 365 yet, it's definitely a product that for most knowledge workers who are embedded in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, there are big benefits to be gained from it, in my view. I use Copilot every single day and it definitely pays for itself with the time I'm able to save in different processes. But no technology is 100% great all round. And like any rapidly evolving tool, Copilot has some gotchas that you must know about before they bite you when you start using it. But with any software, your process of adoption, user training and engagement is what enables you to maximize the value while avoiding pitfalls. So stick around to the end for me to talk about this topic a little bit more. But for now, let's get into these co-pilot gotchas. Gotcha number one, OneNote. There are many dedicated users of OneNote and many OneNote users have years of notes stored in their notebooks covering much of what they do in their jobs. And while Copilot for Microsoft 365 has come to the OneNote app, giving you features that are useful, but not yet groundbreaking, the big gotcha with OneNote is the inability of Copilot to use any of your notes for absolutely anything outside the OneNote app itself. This means if you ask Copilot with GraphGrounded Chat to find information on a client, it'll ignore the page of notes you have on her. If you draft a document in Word for a presentation, your page of brainstorming in OneNote cannot easily be called upon for grounding. Literally none of that content, despite being readily available in Microsoft Search, and despite Microsoft having videos showing Copilot using OneNote for grounding going back more than a year, is accessible to Copilot for Microsoft 365 today. Many will look at this and shrug their shoulders as they don't use OneNote, but in most organizations, you find at least some pockets of OneNote use, an app that has been part of most Microsoft 365 or previously Office installs for the last 20 years. For those who do, this will create a challenge to get value from Copilot. Is this feature coming? My understanding from what Microsoft has previously demoed is yes, but there is nothing on the Microsoft 365 roadmap that highlights this capability. OneNote users may be in for a long wait, or maybe Microsoft is just holding out hope will give up and transition to loop. Gotcha number two, lists. Lists, or its SharePoint focused version, the traditional SharePoint lists, provides an easy way to store structured data inside SharePoint to assist with simple processes. By default, if you create a list, it lives in your OneDrive, or you can add them to groups, or otherwise, if you're creating for SharePoint, they live in the context of that SharePoint site. However, just as with OneNote, Copilot is blind to this data. You may have spent a lot of time constructing and managing lists that help with your processes, as these are a core part of what's on offer with Microsoft 365. But for Copilot for Microsoft 365 and its semantic index, these currently don't exist. Now, unlike OneNote, you can fairly easily give Copilot access to list data using plugins with Copilot Studio. So on a list by list basis, you can certainly expose necessary data to your Copilot users. However, it's difficult to argue that Copilot does have a fully fleshed semantic understanding of your business data when big parts of the data you choose to store in Microsoft 365 just isn't part of its knowledge. Will this come to Copilot? Given how easy it is to access list data with Copilot Studio, I doubt this will be a priority, 
But it does underline that when Microsoft says Copilot uses your Microsoft 365 data out of the box, it's only really focusing on a subset of that Microsoft 365 data, and you have to be clear what it can see and what it can't. Before we look at gotcha number three, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel. And it's also really helpful to get this video in front of a bigger audience if you could drop a comment down below too. Just let me know your thoughts or just that you were here. Thanks. Gotcha number three, metadata. While many organizations need some sort of data cleanup in order to get the best from Copilot for Microsoft 365, for years, best practices in using SharePoint have highlighted the value in applying metadata to offer more graceful ways of organizing content than simply relying on traditional folder hierarchies. If you're unsure what I mean by metadata, it's the feature in SharePoint that allows you to add columns of information inside a document library to further categorize and sort the files you're storing. If you've invested time in managing the properties that get applied to files stored in SharePoint, either automatically or manually, then the usability of Microsoft Search to access your data will definitely be increased. But while the Copilot Semantic Index expands the usability of Microsoft Search further, your focus on metadata doesn't actually factor into Copilot's capabilities. Right now, for example, there is no way to have a Copilot response focus on documents tagged in a certain way through metadata columns. Ideally, it would be great to see custom properties be a data type that can be included in a Copilot prompt so that those organizations that invested the most effort in following best practices around file management continue to receive maximum benefit in the age of AI. However, as it stands, I'm not aware of any announced features for Copilot that would remediate this problem if it impacts you. Gotcha number four, poor experience for external meetings. Copilot in Teams is, in my view, the most useful face of Copilot's many capabilities. In meeting help to catch up or ask questions of the content, post-meeting summaries and Q&A with the transcript, and even the ability to include meeting content elsewhere through Copilot. I think using Copilot in Teams has saved me more time on its own than all the other Copilot options combined. However, there is one big gotcha, and it's one that I really feel regularly as someone running a one-person business. That is that Copilot is only available in meetings organized within your tenant. In the context of Copilot in Teams, only people who are inside the organization that set up the meeting, often referred to as the hosting organization, get any benefit whatsoever from Copilot licensing, either during the meeting or after it. If you want to use Copilot but someone else, whether a client or a third party contractor sent you the invite, then you're just SOL. As the usefulness of Copilot in Teams through proactive support with team Copilots increases, for example, this gotcha is likely to amplify an impact for those whose meetings are often hosted elsewhere. And right now, I don't believe there has been much indication from Microsoft that this is really something to be fixed, which is disappointing, as for many smaller businesses, this is likely a significant pain point in adopting Copilot. What are your thoughts on this limitation? Let me know down in the comments. Gotcha number five, the licensing question mark. For many months after Copilot for Microsoft 365 was announced, questions circled around how it would be licensed and how much it would cost. In the summer of 2023, when we finally found out it was going to cost $30 per user per month, many were shocked and pretty appalled. However, around that time, I made several videos focusing in on the price and identifying why this represents good value. And I still stand by many of those points. Over time, Copilot has grown to include or have upcoming capabilities in new places like Forms, Loop, Whiteboard, and OneDrive. And fairly universally, these have been flagged as new Copilot features for existing Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses. This type of feature expansion and consolidation is what we've seen before in Microsoft's online products. But now there's a bump in the road, Copilot in Planner. Despite most base licenses for Copilot for Microsoft 365, including Planner, to get access to Copilot for Planner, 
you currently need a Project Plan 3 or Plan 5 license, with final licensing to be confirmed. And while right now, in my opinion, Copilot in Planner doesn't have a set of features every Copilot user would need, in some ways, this diversion from what had become the norm around Copilot access opens up questions for the future. There are currently a number of Microsoft 365 tools that don't have a Copilot. There is no Copilot for bookings, for example. But we can no longer assume that if these Copilot-less products finally did get Copilots announced, that they would be included in those $30 a month Copilot for Microsoft 365 licenses. While not the same as the other gotchas I listed here, this unknown in terms of how Microsoft is committing to bringing Copilot AI to the Microsoft 365 suite is a reason why some buyers might take some time for pause before submitting their order for licenses. Your list might be a little different to mine, as every single tool, no matter how useful it is, has limitations or downsides, and those limitations are strongly contextualized to the work or activities you're trying to do with it every day. Once you've selected a new tool and decided to try it out or roll it out broadly, knowing those limitations is important, but building value from capabilities rather than focusing on what doesn't work is how you deliver impact and help users to achieve the most they can. There are lots of pieces to the Copilot adoption puzzle, from initially choosing it, to engaging with leadership, to training team members, to technical alignment, data cleanup, governance, and considering the future through extensibility. It can be a multi-tiered and long-term journey to achieve maximum success. And if you need help with this journey, either through strategic advice or more hands-on adoption process support, I can help. Check out the links below to find out how and to take a look at some of my other content like my currently free AI adoption course for business leaders. Just remember the way to turn a potential gotcha into a planned limitation where you have a solution or workaround is to plan out your adoption and match the features of the product to the needs you have. If this is done proactively and communicated well, you will minimize the bumps in the road that might come up when products don't do what users might otherwise expect. What is your experience of this? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.